Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and this week Lawn Fawn is teaming up with Zyron to showcase how great their adhesives work with Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. Adhesives are such an important part of paper crafting, and you need great adhesives in your crafting stash for all of your crafting needs. I am going to create this out of this world card featuring a couple of my favorite adhesive products from Zyron. I'm gonna start with these images from the Lawn Fawn Out of This World stamp set. I've got the astronaut, the sun, some planets, and I'm gonna use my Misty to stamp these so that I can stamp the images one on top of another to get really good stamped impressions. I wanna make sure that there's no faint or light marks anywhere. You can see with that first stamping, there are a few. So I'll ink those up again. I am using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. This is a perfect ink for Copic coloring. It is fantastic. One of the things I love about the Out of This World stamp set and many of Lawn Fawn stamp sets is that they include little faces that you can use with or you don't have to use with their stamped images. So if you wanna do a little more whimsical look, you can add some of the cute little faces. I'm gonna add faces to the sunshine and planets here today. Now I know I'm kind of creating an outer space type of scene, so the sun is kind of funny, but after I had already stamped and colored it, my original idea was a little bit different than what I ended up with. Um, I decided to leave it in, mostly because I think it's so super cute and it was the biggest yellow accent I had. You might notice as I'm coloring here with my Copic markers that my planets are very much in rainbow color, meaning there's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And I did that on purpose. I really wanted to go bright and primary. I really love using the rainbow colors on cards and I wanted it to really pop off of the background I was creating. I thought the sunshine was so cute. It really went with my whole card, so I left it in. If that bothers you, definitely just maybe substitute it for a different planet. I love this little planet that looks like the planet Earth. So I'm coloring it with some blues for the water and then greens for the land masses. All the Copic colors I'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen. So if at any time you're wondering exactly which color of marker I'm using, this will be your guide or go-to so that you know exactly what I'm using where. I tried to stick to about two shades per color family. I think the yellow had more like three plus the addition of a little bit of orange. On any planet that is not red or orange, I did add little pink cheeks with R20. And on some of the planets, I'm gonna add some little dot detail to give them some texture. The red one here is gonna be one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna go in with my darker of the two colors and add some little dots, and that just gives it some nice texture. Couple of little stripy planets. A couple of them I definitely kept I didn't keep to just one color, I guess I wanna say. So this planet's gonna be orange and yellow. One of the things I noticed as I was coloring, because in the finished card at the beginning, beginning of the video, you probably noticed that there was a green planet plus a teeny tiny purple one. What happened was I colored these and I realized that I didn't have a very green heavy planet or purple. Both of those were really underrepresented for what I was trying to create. So I'm gonna actually stamp two more planets to use in my little outer space scene. This planet's blue and purple. And you can see that there's just, it really needs that pop of green, I feel. Purple tends to be the color I leave out. If I'm gonna be leaving out any in the rainbow color, it's probably because I'm not much of a purple fan. So if there's ever a color to leave out, that's the one I do. So originally I stamped just one extra planet, this one, this little one with the ring here, and it's gonna be green. 
And then later I will stamp one of the teeny tiny planets and color it purple. And I'm really glad I did because I think it really gives a better overall look of the rainbow color planets. Next, I'm gonna color my little astronaut colored in his face with some flesh colors, a little R20 for the cheeks for him again. I went pretty simple with his little space outfit here with some reds and then cool grays for the rest of it. So to make his space suit look white, I went with light cool gray colors. The darkest I used, I believe, was um, for his actual outfit was C2. For any of the darker areas, those are gonna be C5 and C8. But otherwise, I kept very, very light to give it the illusion of being white. I'm gonna color in that little bit of hair with a few colors of earth tones. E55, 57, 53 I think was the base color. For his space helmet, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of light gray to give it a little bit of texture. And later on, I'll add some glossy accents to that to really make it look like glass. Now I'm gonna die cut those with the coordinating dies, but first I did die cut a background using the snowy backdrop die. Now this I know is meant to be a snowy background, but I love the stars and think it's perfect for an outer space background. I die cut it from some Bristol Smooth cardstock because I think Distress inks blend beautifully on this. And I am adding Wilted Violet, Peacock Feathers, Chipped Sapphire, and Black Soot Distress inks all over the surface. The colorful inks are really gonna be muted. You're not gonna see a ton of those. Simply want that to be just a tiny touch of color there in the background. Once I get all of the inks applied the way I want them to look, after I added the black, I did go back in with some of my colors, add a, few, a little bit of that back in. I'm gonna spritz this with water from a Distress sprayer and then blot it dry. Go ahead and blend out a few more there. So there's what my background's gonna look like. What I love about all these little openings is that it's going to provide a great place for glitter. And I'm gonna show you a real easy way to apply the glitter. I've got a piece of stick it adhesive here that I'm going to apply to the whole back of this. When I remove that backing paper, all of those little cutout areas are now sticky. So I'm gonna just put a piece of scrap paper underneath this and sprinkle on some pumice stone dis distress glitter all over the surface. I'm gonna kind of press it in real good. Anywhere where there's those little die cut areas, the glitter's going to stick because I've put some sticky adhesive on the back. It's a little hard to tell here, but in real life, there's little glitter areas everywhere. It's fantastic. I did go ahead and add another layer. I wanted to make sure anything that had adhesive was fully covered with glitter. This is so much easier than maybe laying this over a piece of glitter paper or putting glue in each and every one of those tiny little areas and then applying glitter. I love the a whole sheet of adhesive for doing this technique. Now I've got a couple of borders here, die cut with the Puffy Cloud Borders dies, one from vellum and one from some smooth white cardstock. These are gonna go along the bottom of the scene. I'm using the Teresa Collins Mega Runner to adhere both of these borders to the bottom. So I'll start with my vellum. I wanna make sure that I keep my adhesive low enough that this white cloud border will cover that up completely. This is a great, nice, strong adhesive. It's fantastic for adhering larger pieces. I especially love it for, like you're seeing here, the borders, attaching this whole panel to my card base in a little bit, things like that. I need to trim off a little excess from my clouds now. So I'll just clean that up. Then I'm taking greetings from the Out of This World stamp set. I love that Lawn Fawn allows you to mix and match so many of their greetings. So you can really customize your greeting to read it the way you want it to. I'm using the Misty to stamp this. A lot of times I need to stamp it twice, one on top of another to get a nice crisp impression. This time I really didn't need to, but it did help me line it up perfectly. 
So my greeting reads, I love you to the stars and back, which is perfect for this little scene. There you can see the glitter a little bit better. I think it's fantastic. So I've got all my little images here and I need to adhere them to my outer space scene. And the best way to do this is to make these stickers. I think it would also be super fun to maybe make these into stickers, keep them on the sticker strip, and you could mail them if this is for a little, um, a little one, and they could build the scene with these stickers however they wanted to. So this is the Xyron one and a half inch sticker maker, and you just simply put your little pieces down here as long as they're not any bigger than one and a half inches wide and pull, and they are going to be covered on the back with adhesive, which is so fantastic. I just love the sticker maker. It is so great for getting adhesive on the entire background of your little pieces. I'm gonna pull off the backing paper now, and then all I have to do is take those little images and create my scene. So this is really where if you wanted to send this as a gift to somebody and let them put together the scene the way they want to, you totally could. You've made them stickers. Um, I think it would be fun to create a whole bunch of these little scenes and send them to somebody. Maybe if there's um, a sick child or something like that, I think it would really be fun. Birthdays, all kinds of things. So I'm going to go ahead and build the scene with my planets, try to figure out where I want everything to go. A couple of the planets are gonna hang off the edges. This always helps to make it just a tiny bit more cohesive, I think. Um, it grounds the whole scene so it doesn't feel like everything's just kind of floating out there in outer space. In this instance, it really is. I'm gonna trim off any of that excess from those two planets on each side. And there is my scene. At this point, the card really could be finished if you wanted it to be. I am going to take a black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes. That's going to make them all really pop. There's that little purple planet that I was talking about earlier. And then there are two sizes of stars in the out of this world stamp set. So I'm gonna stamp those down there near the greeting and I'm gonna color those in with Copic markers. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. I did leave the purple out here, but I really, I wanted an odd number of stars. So this works out fine. This is one of those times where I leave the purple out. But this adds a nice little pop of color near the bottom of the scene and really ties it all together with the planets. I'm gonna use the Mega Runner again to add adhesive to a white top fold card base. And then I can attach my scene to that. And then all is that I have left are a few finishing touches. I'm gonna to take glossy accents and add that to the space helmet. That's gonna give it that nice glass look. I have a fine tip applicator on my glossy accents to help that. I've got a Stardust glitter pin, so I'm gonna add a little glitter detail to just a few of the planets, tracing along some of those stamp lines there. In real, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see it a little bit there. It adds just a tiny touch of glitter, not overwhelming. I think I'll do that around the rings on the two planets that have the rings going around them. Then I'm gonna take some glossy accents again and go over the water on the planet that I like to call Earth. That's what I think it looks like. I'll also add glossy accents to a couple of places on the spacesuit and the stars down there near the greeting. It's gonna give them a nice glossy finish and finish up the card really nicely. Thanks for joining me for this out of this world card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies and Xyron adhesives. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.